Good morning. Good morning. That's better. You can see now the, the screen took a moment to load there. I hope you're all well. Um, just a few people joining at the minute. So we'll just give it a few moments um, whilst you get yourself set up um, and see if anybody else joins in in the meantime. I appreciate the time slot for this particular session might not suit everybody, but I'm hoping some of you will be able to um, join in maybe on catch up as well. Um, and in all of our videos, if you watch on catch up, bear in mind the first part is me waffling on or Graham waffling on. So it's always feel free to skip on while we just check um, things like sound and uh, wait for people to join in anyway. Um, and so maybe some of you um, are familiar with the Ashtanga sequence that some of you've done the classes with myself or Graham over the past few years, or maybe some of you have got the opportunity to join in today because you can't normally get to the classes, or maybe you've just got a bit of an interest and you're not sure whether it's for you, or maybe I've, I've had a few people asking me whether it's a, an advanced practice or whether it's suitable for people who are, um, maybe who call themselves a beginner. Um, to be honest, it's, Stranger's a funny sequence. It, it can be, it can be quite challenging. It can be um, very dynamic. It is, it is a, certainly a practice, morning Michelle, um, where you are expected to feel tired. You're expected to feel warm. And that's one of the purposes is to make sure that the whole body um, is fully warmed, not just the muscles, not just the big muscles like the thighs and the arms, but every joint in the body there's a, an element of expecting the breath to change significantly during the practice. Um, the breathing is a really um, big part of the sequence and it can be pretty tough to, to keep the breath flowing and keep breathing deeply throughout that practice. So the physical demand of, of the fact that we do lots of postures, the postures themselves are fairly simple. Um, but and also the physical demand of the way we breathe and the fact that we do um, sun salutations mean that, good morning, Pamela, um, mean that we create this, you know, kind of, kind of a big effect or a big response in the body. And it, it can be quite profound. It might mean that some of you feel like, ah, this is really tough. This is quite hard for me. And my advice to you if you feel like that is to kind of be well one be kind to yourself don't expect yourself to be able to do all of these postures the first time that you have a go certainly there's an element of rep repetitiveness within the practice so once you you can you know try it today maybe repeat this video i'm probably going to run another few of these a beginner or sort of a um, basic ashtanga sessions anyway and sort of build your practice gradually um, with patience and certainly it's a lifelong practice so for those that really are you know keen on ashtanga in particular it becomes a lifelong practice with the simple idea with that you begin to learn the postures you begin to learn the sequence and um, the steps um, to move through the whole sequence. Now today we're only doing the standing part of the, the sequence rather than the whole primary series. Um, but certainly there's a lot in there to learn. And if you've done any yoga before and you've not done Ashtanga, having said that, you will be very familiar with the postures, I'm sure, um, but it will just take you through the, the what's the, sort of take you through the sequence to learn the difference between sort of Hatha yoga and Ashtanga yoga. Um, the postures themselves, like I say, are, are will be familiar to you, but it will feel quite different in the body. Okay. Andrea as well, how are you doing? Yeah, no, excess energy, yeah, I feel a bit like that as well, actually, Andrea. Um, all this sitting around, I need to kind of burn off some, some of the energy. Um, so what I want you to do, is obviously set your mat up if you've got a mat um, and have it so it's parallel to the screen rather than facing forward. So basically set your mat up so it's the same as mine. 
uh, parallel to the screen. But what you we want you to do when we start the, the physical practice is to stand at the top of your mat and make sure that when you step, so you want to sort of face um, the left side of your mat so that when you step out right with your right foot, we'll be doing this a lot, you can see your screen, okay? So I don't know how you've been practicing recently, but you want to set up your mat like this so that when you step wide with the right foot, you can see the screen for the most part anyway, for most of the postures that will work really well, okay? For the time being, I want you to come down and have a seat. We'll start with a stillness practice um, to help settle in and to move into our breath as well. So take your hands onto your legs, wherever it suits. Sit tall, lift your lower back, draw your shoulders down from the ears and slightly back to open up the chest. Let the hands and arms rest, otherwise balance the head and begin to close your eyes. As you allow the body to settle, to become still, move your attention to your breath and the feeling of the breath in and out through the nose. See how that feels initially? So use the nose as much as you can, but obviously if that becomes a challenge, you can take a rest from that if you need to. And feel that you can draw the breath down low, so breathing in through the nose, but pulling the breath down to the lower part of your lungs. As you breathe in down low, you will hopefully begin to feel that the lower ribs are expanding, the belly is expanding as the diaphragm pulls down. So we're looking for a full breath, bigger than your natural breathing pattern, if you like. So it feels longer, deeper, and generally fuller. So it feels like you're pulling in lots of air. And the same on the out breath. It's a long exhale, taking your time to breathe out and emptying the air fully to the end of your out breath. And that in itself can be a physical challenge. Bearing in mind, we're going to hopefully or aim to continue to do this whilst moving the body dynamically for a duration of probably, what, an hour, maybe just over an hour this morning in this particular session. So of course, at any time, if you need to take a rest with your breath, then that's great. It's better to breathe more times, breathing extra breaths, than it is to hold your breath as well. The other thing I'd like you to focus on whilst we stay with the breath is to feel that you can control your breath a little bit. And so in my mind, that means a slight constriction at the back of the throat, the back of the nose and throat area, so that when you breathe in, it's like you're closing the airway. You're creating a, a smaller channel for the breath to whoosh over, if you like. So as you're breathing in and breathing out, You can possibly begin to hear your own breath passing over the surface of the airway. I don't know if you can detect that on the microphone, but
continue to breathe with a fullness, even if you're not able to find this constriction at the back of the throat. And we call this the ujjayi breath. If you've never done it before, like anything, it takes practice and certainly just the same as our physical body will adapt um, to getting stronger with practice. The same with the muscles at the back of the throat as well. So um, take, you know, be gentle with yourself here and give yourself some time for that to adapt. And of course, practicing will help you to feel a little bit more comfortable with that as well. Let's take three more of these breaths. And then we'll gently begin to open the eyes. Okay, so join me in standing. We're gonna stand at the top of the mat. Like I said, if you've only just joined in, um, then bear in mind that you want to step wide with the right foot and be able to see the screen, okay? When you come to stand at the top of your mat, you face um, um, to the narrow edge of your mat. But what I want to show you here is the, the position of your feet. So your feet are hip width apart. Nice little way to measure this is to gently bend your knees, bring the two fists side by side. And as you reach down, the space between your feet approximately is the, the space of the two fists side by side here. And that gives you a good indication of what is hip width. Traditionally, Ashtanga Yoga, you would actually have your feet together. But um, in the, the first, if it's the first time you've done this practice, it's nice to have a bit more space um, between the feet, especially because we're going to do lots of forward folds. It helps to find a bit more space at the hips when you're folding forward. So feet facing forward, feet hip width apart, and your feet parallel to each other or aligned with each with each other. And the way to, to get that alignment, one of the ways in this, various ways that this can be explained is to look at the outside edges of your feet and have them aligned with each other rather than the inside edges of the feet. Um, because of the way the big toe can sometimes point different directions. So outside edges of the feet aligned allows you to have your feet facing forward in the same direction as your knees. And then we'll reach the fingertips down, stand tall. Try not to arch the back, pull the, the, the belly button in towards the spine, back of the pelvis gently down. Pull the front ribs in and the shoulders back. It can feel a bit awkward, but there's a, and there's a certain element of effort to do this. Have the fingers closed so there's no spaces between the fingers, fingertips reaching down, and balance the head. Come back to your ujjayi breath or your deep breath in and out through the nose. Your next inhale, we're going to reach overhead with the arms. So breathing in. And breathing out, swim the arms down, bend the knees and reach down to where you can with the hands, either side of the foot or down the legs. Tuck the chin in. Halfway, gaze forward, keep the hands down but looking forward. Plant the hands and let's step the right foot back and the left foot back to a plank position. And as you come into plank, have your wrists under your shoulders, a straight line if you can between your heels and your shoulders. So basically check that the, the bottom's not high or the bottom's not low. Right in the middle, the back of the pelvis reaching towards your heels, which helps you to pull the belly button into the spine. Breathing in. And as you descend, you might need to bring your knees down. So it's quite a strong movement. But you're going to lower to land the hips and chest on the floor at the same time. Untuck the toes. Keep the palms under the shoulders and then breathe in to lift the chest. So I like to choose Cobra um, as an introduction to this sun salutation. And then pressing back 
to the hands and knees, tuck the toes, and then lifting the hips. Knees slightly bent, pressing the chest back towards your thighs or towards your legs with the arms as straight as you can. Double check now, the hands are shoulder width and your feet are still hip width apart and steady breaths in and out through the nose. Look forward. We're going to step the right and then the left foot. But if it's easier to do so, bring your knees down first. Bring the right foot forward. You can use your hand to get the foot there. And then spring off the left foot to step both feet to the top of the mat. Hands are still down here. By the side of the feet, inhale, lift the chest. And breathe out, fold in to the legs. Breathe in to stand, reaching all the way up and bring the hands to the chest as you breathe out. We repeat that sun salutation. Inhale, exhale, fold. Halfway, inhale, exhale, left foot back, plank. Holding the plank position, still breathing. And of course, again, you can lower your knees. Inhale at the top, exhale, down to the mat. Inhale, cobra again. Exhale. Hands and knees, and then, of course, straight into downward dog. So if your practice allows, you can skip the hands and knees. It's useful when you first start out. A lot of the effort to for Ashtanga Yoga is the movement between postures as well as the postures themselves. So that's one of the main differences, actually, between various schools of yoga is the way we move, the way we transition. Steady breaths. From here, left foot forward. Again, you can bring the knees down or you can step the left foot all the way to the space of the hands, right foot to the top of the mat. Hands are still down. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold. Back into the legs. So tuck the chin in as you fold down. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, the hands to the chest. Okay, we're going to do two more of these sun salutations. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, halfway, gaze forward, inhale, exhale, right and left. And you can do a full plank if you're, if you're ready to do so. You can gently lower all the way down to the floor. Inhale, as you lift up, exhale, and press back to downward dog. Steady breaths. forward right then left inhale lift the chest exhale fold into the legs inhale rise all the way up exhale hands to chest inhale reach up exhale fold forward halfway inhale exhale left and right high plank half plank if needed or lowering gradually as you breathe out, inhale, heart forward, exhale, 
to Dog. And so the challenge may be starting to become clear. The, the breath is wanting to speed up. It's wanting to get a little bit um, faster. So your job is to continue to breathe fully and slow it down. So we look to do about five breaths or so in this downward dog posture. While we hold the posture, we still breathe uh, about five breaths in total. But take more if you need to. So if your breath's got very fast, just, that's fine. Just do more breaths. Don't hold your breath. Let's go left foot forward, both feet forward, lift the chest, inhale, exhale, fold, inhale, rise all the way to stand, exhale, the hands to chest. Okay, so what we did for sun salutation A, we're going to do two sun salutation B. There's more similarities than there are differences. Um, but we do start off in a slightly different way. So we're going to move into chair pose um, initially. Stand tall, mountain pose again, reaching the fingertips down. And then breathing in. Breathing out, bend the knees. Breathing in, reach the arms up. Breathing out, fold all the way down. So as you fold, lift the hips, reach the hands to the floor or the legs. Inhale, gaze forward again. Exhale, step the right, then the left, and slowly guide yourself down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Okay, so instead of holding the dog posture, we're going to step the right foot forward, spin the back heel, so when you bring the back heel down, the back toes face slightly forward as well. Try to keep facing as far forward as you can with your pelvis your chest, and then as you breathe in, reaching the arms up, right knee bent for warrior one. And then breathing out as you bring the hands down and step back, guide the chest, pelvis to the mats. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale to downward dog. Left side, same as the right side, spin the back heel down, left knee bent, rise to stand, warrior one, reaching overhead. Exhale on the way down. So keep breathing out if you can, if you can keep breathing out all the way to the floor. Takes a bit of practice. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale to downward dog. And now holding the posture for five breaths, slowing down the breath. Look forward, right, then left. Both feet to the top of the mat. Lift the chest. Breathe out, fold. Breathe in as you bend the knees. Lift the chest, reach up with the arms. And then breathing out, fold all the way down and back to the legs. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, left and right back. Slowly guide yourself to the floor. Inhale. Up forward, exhale, downward dog, right foot between the hands again, spin the back heel with your right knee bent, face forward as much as you can with your hips and chest, breathe in as you reach up and then breathing out as you lower down to the mat, inhale, up forward, exhale, downward dog, Left side, steps up, warrior one, front knee bent, reach up, hips forward, shoulders 
forward, breathing in, and then breathing out slowly on the descent down to the mat. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog, slowing the breath down. Look forward, left and right, lift the chest, breathe out, fold into the legs, bend the knees as you breathe in to chair, and then exhale as we stand, bring the hands to the chest. Okay, well done. So we did six sun salutations, four of sun, salut sun salutation A and two of the B. Traditionally, you would do five of each. Um, so adequately warm. I think for today's practice, have the feet hip width apart, bring the hands to the hips, breathe in, lift the chest, long spine, and then as you breathe out, you're going to fold forward. When you get to your folded position, release the hands, if possible, either side of the feet, remember you can bend your knees in forward folds, inhale, lift, lengthen, look forward, elongate the spine, Exhale as you fold into the legs. If you can get hold of the big toe with your hands, hook the first two fingers on the inside of the big toe. So you can actually hook the fingers on the inside of the toe. Not essential. And keep folding in and down. So the crown of the head pointing towards the floor and your abdomen moving closer towards your thighs. So we're going to stay in a folded position. Inhale, rise up halfway. And now change the hands. Bend the knees more and bring the backs of the hands to the floor. Try and get the toes right to the crease of your wrists. I know it's a little bit odd, this one. I usually make some corny joke about doing a handstand. But pressing the balls of the feet into the hands and then refold back in to the legs. So your knees probably need to bend a bit more. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. And keep folding into the legs. Gently pulling the hands up to the feet at the same time. Stretch the back of the wrists. From here, let's release the hands to the hips. Breathe in gently, slowly, come and stand all the way up. If you feel a bit dizzy, take a moment before you move or come down to the floor. From here, we're gonna step the right foot wide. Step as wide as the length of one of your legs and parallel the feet to each other. So line up the outside edges of the feet. You should feel like you're in a fairly wide stance. All we're gonna do here is turn the right toes to the long edge, uh, sorry, the right toes round to the, the narrow edge of the mat. So the right um, toes point away from the screen. And you should feel that you're gently beginning to open across the front of your thighs, even before we've done anything else here. Press down through the feet, keep the legs um, firm by pressing down. Make sure that when you extend the right leg that it's not over um, stretching the back of the knee. So if that doesn't feel nice here, have a tiny little bend that you can't see but it just feels like you're, you're backing out of the joint slightly. 
Otherwise, the legs are essentially straight. Inhale, reach the arms wide. Reach over the right leg. And exhale down to the side. So a side position so that you're keeping your top shoulder back. Your right hand doesn't have to be down low if it's not down on the leg. If it's not down on the floor, no problem. Hand on the leg is great. And rotating the chest towards the sky. Steady breaths, firm legs. Inhale, rising all the way up. And then we're going to bend the right knee to spin the right toes to the long edge of the mat and then repeat the left side, left toes to the narrow edge of the mat. So essentially moving to the second side. Legs firm, straight, press down through the feet. Inhale over the left leg. Exhale to the side. Again, rotate the chest towards the sky. Top shoulder back. Inhale, rise up. We're going to take a little rest between each of the standing postures. So step up to the top of your mat. But in traditional Ashtanga, you would, you would continue to the, the next posture without a break in between. Let's bring the hands to the hips. Inhale, step the right foot wide again. Parallel the feet. We're going to start with the, the right leg again. So we're going to turn the right toes round to the back of the mat as before. But this time also bring the left toes round slightly. And then have a look down at your feet. If your, if your feet have crossed each other, as you trace a line from the front heel um, down to the back foot, if the foot's behind or if you feel very wobbly, what you can do is bring the two heels hip width apart. Especially for people who are new to this posture or this practice, having the feet hip width apart will give you some stability, helping you to twist. The next posture's got a big twist in it. So the legs stay straight and firm. So revolve triangle, otherwise the legs straight as before. Inhale, reach up through the left arm. Exhale, fold at the right hip. And as you reach down, left hand is going lower towards that right leg. Or if you've got the scope, it's towards the outside of your right foot, which is a long way down, to be fair. So reach as far as you can. Firm up the legs to help you balance. Spin the chest to the right side. Keep rotating the chest round, top shoulder round. And then if you've got a good rotation and it feels okay in your shoulder, reaching up through the right hand. It's a big posture with a big twist. Lots of things going on here for balance. So be steady and kind to yourself. Inhale all the way up. Bend the right knee, turn the right toes. Bend the left knee, turn the left toes. Facing the left side this time. So we're gonna turn the hips to the left. Inhale, right arm up, legs are straight and firm. Exhale and fold. Fold at the hips, reach the hand down, might be down on the leg. It might be down towards the foot or to the outside of the left foot if you can. So keep squeezing or scissoring the inner thighs towards each other to turn the chest round. With a good rotation in the spine, reach the left arm up. Inhale all the way up. And then when you're ready, get uh, release the hands to the hips and step the left foot 
to the top of your, uh, sorry, your right foot to the top of the mat. So stepping up to the front again. <coughs> okay, you're going to step the right foot wide again. Wide is the length of one leg. Keep the left toes facing the long edge and now turn just your right toes this time to the narrow edge of your mat. Bend into your right knee. And as you bend your knee, make sure the knee's over your ankle. The knee joint is in line with your ankle joint. Left back leg is straight. So inhale, reach the arms wide. Exhale, bring the elbow down and then diagonally reach the left arm across the side of the face, but keep the head close to your left arm. Rotate the ribs to the sky. So it's a side angle posture. So keeping everything in the side plane. Notice any sticking out of the bottom or of the arm, left arms forward, try and peel it back. Lengthen the back of the pelvis towards the direction of your left heel. Gently pull the abdomen in towards the spine. Feel the pelvic floor gently lift. Inhale, rise up, and then rotate the right toes, rotate the left toes, inhale, exhale, elbow to knee or thigh, back leg straight and firm, rotate to the long edge of your mat, facing the long edge with your chest and hips, reaching the right arm diagonally across the side of the face, and the head is close to the arm, make sure the head hasn't fallen off, keeping the head Close to the arm keeps the neck in line with the rest of your spine. Firm legs. Back of the pelvis towards the right heel. Rather than letting it stick out behind. Inhale, rising all the way up. And exhale, we'll step up to the top of the mat as you relax your legs. Take a little breather. The next posture is a little bit different. It's a modification. It's quite heavily modified um, to make it slightly more accessible for people who are new to this practice. So we're going to step the right foot wide again. However, we're going to change everything, everything up. Face the, the narrow edge of your mat. Bend both knees to bring the left knee down to the floor behind. You can pad up the back knee if you're a bit uncomfortable on the floor. You're going to sink the hips fairly low. Keep the knee over the ankle. Inhale. Exhale, bring the left elbow or forearm across to the outer right knee or thigh and then push the arm into the outer leg. You can press your two hands together with the elbows wide. Try and spin the chest over to the right. So pushing the arm into the leg, spinning the chest, spinning the spine, top shoulder back. And then exhale, release. As you release, I'm turning around, but you're gonna slowly rise up to stand. Spin the feet, left foot all the way to the top of your mat, and then bend both knees again to bring your right knee down to the floor behind you. Again, get comfortable through the back knee, fairly low in the hips, you need to be fairly low in order to get close to that bent front leg. We'll twist to the left this time. Inhale, exhale, it's right elbow hooks across, of course, over to the left side, press into the leg with the arm, spin the chest as far as you can. You can press the palms together, it's not essential, but it's sometimes people find it helps. Push the top left hand down, turn the chest, help the spine to spin in the opposite direction.
And then exhale, release. As you release, you're coming to step up to the top of your mat. Take a rest at the top. We're going to step wide with the right foot behind. Wide is the length of one leg. Parallel the feet and keep the feet parallel this time. Wide legs. Toes pointing directly forward. Same direction as your knees. Hands at the hips. Breathe in. And then breathing out, fold. Fold at the hips. You can soften at the knees or bend the knees to accommodate any tightness at the knees. Bring the hands between the feet. Fingers in line with toes if you can. Shoulder width apart. Inhale, lift, lengthen, look forward. And then exhale as you're folding, pressing to the hands. Let the elbows move through the legs. The crown of the head is in the direction of the mat, but of course not necessarily on the mat. Hips are lifting high. Shoulders from the ears, steady breaths. Exhale, release, so releasing the deep fold. Hands at the hips, inhale, rising all the way up. Keep the feet the same. We're going to take two, the three more folded positions with the legs exactly the same. Hands at the hips again. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Now keeping the hands at the hips as you come into your deep forward fold again. Same principle with the legs and the hips high. This time pressing the hands into the side of the waist or your pelvis. Squeeze the elbows towards each other, shoulder blades towards each other. But still again, tuck the chin and lengthen the crown of the head in the direction of the floor squeezing back with the elbows, squeezing back with the shoulder blades, for the effort through the arms. And now inhale, rising all the way up, so rising up to stand. The third position is different with the hands. So interlace the fingers behind the back, knuckles outwards, and then you can gently begin to feel like you're extending the arms or getting them straighter. Inhale, lift the chest, the legs the same. Exhale, folding all the way down to your deep forward fold again. As you do so, maybe the hands can lift. Maybe you can keep squeezing your shoulder blades together to bring the hands closer towards the floor. We'll test your balance as well. So keep the legs engaged so you don't keep going all the way over. Tuck the chin in. Pull the shoulders from the ears. Active arms, just as much as your legs are active. Finding your breath in this upside down position. Inhale, rising all the way up. So we're going to come all the way to stand. Again, if you're feeling a bit dizzy with all these folded positions, take your moment to rest. Release the hands back to the hips. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold all the way down. Fourth position, final forward fold of this particular sequence like this. So slide the hands down this time. First two fingers hook on the big inside of the big toe like we did in the first forward fold. Inhale, lift, lengthen. Exhale as you're folding. Pull back gently on the toes. Elbows move wide. If your elbows are bent, moving them wide and pulling the shoulders from the ears again. Exhale, release. So coming out the fold slightly, hands to hips, inhale, rising all the way up. And then as you release the legs, step up to the top of the mat. And maybe even bend the knees to give your legs a little rest to the back here. Next posture, stepping right foot wide. Slightly shorter, actually, should I said, slightly shorter than the previous posture. So it was sort of three quarters of the length of one leg. 
turn the right toes to the back of your mat and also turn the left toes to the back of the mat. Light revolve triangle, if you need to have your heels hip width apart, that will help you find a little bit more balanced. The legs are gonna stay straight and the legs are gonna stay firm, so helping you balance here. The hand position is a little bit tricky. Certainly there are options and you can decide what's best for you today. So potentially this is traditional um, reverse prayer position. See if you can get the heel of the hands to touch. If you can't do that, you can take fist, a little bit gentler on the wrists. You can still work the fists up the back. If that's still really tough, you can hold your wrists or your elbows. If you can reach your elbows or forearms. Either way, squeeze back, shoulders towards each other. So squeeze the shoulder blades together. Elbows go wide. Inhale, facing your right leg. Exhale, try to fold over the right leg. So it's not just to the inside of the leg, it's across the right leg. The leg is straight, so you might find you can't get close to the leg here, that's okay. I'd expect that to be the case. Scissor the inner thighs towards each other, holding you nice and stable. Inhale, rising all the way up. If you're happy to keep the hands and arms in place, please do so. We're going to repeat the second side, left toes all the way round, back toes round, facing forward. You might need to step the right foot wider to have the feet, heels hip width apart. Again, squeeze back, elbows and shoulders, breathe in. And then breathing out, fold over the left leg. So again, aim to move across slightly. It feels like you're kind of almost twisting, not quite twisting, but reaching further. Then to the inside of the left leg, it's across to the right to the left leg with the abdomen, maybe the face facing the shin. Keep the legs firm. Do your best to keep squeezing the elbows back, shoulders towards each other, shoulder blades towards each other. Inhale, rising all the way up. And then exhale as you step up to the top of the mat. Maybe it's useful to face your screen at this point. You wanna have some space out in front and out to the sides as well. So maybe standing in the middle of your mat. We're gonna balance, so find a firm, steady spot on the earth, whether that means stepping off your mat. If you've got a very squishy mat, you might find it useful to step directly onto the hard floor surface underneath. Um, I'm gonna do a mirror image of the posture. So you're gonna stand on your left leg and you're gonna bring your right hand to your right, either knee or foot, okay, leg or foot actually. Um, so holding the leg behind your right thigh, right hand, right thigh, with the leg bent, you can have your right leg bent. If you can get hold of the foot, hold the first two fingers on the inside of the big toe and you can connect the hand that way. If you can connect the hand that way, some of you will have the scope to get the right leg a little bit straighter or straight. You can have the leg straight. That's what kind of what we're looking towards if it's physically feasible, but it's not essential, right? So leg bent, held with the thigh as high as you can. Stand tall, keep the hand connected to the leg. Steady breaths. Keep the hand connected to the leg, slowly opening the right leg to the side. And so as you're moving, you can do this with the leg straight or bent, with the hand holding the toes as well, of course. Try not to lean left. You want to stay standing as upright as you can. Use the hand on the leg, pull back slightly, 
help you to stand tall. The breath is your focus when balancing. And balances can help provide mental clarity. So notice if that's not the case, if you're not able to balance today, of course, that's okay. It's normal. That's the practice. We're going to bring the leg to center. So keep the leg high. Keep the thigh as high as you can. Breathe in. Lift the leg. Extend the foot forward and then release the hands. So hands free. Kick your right toes as high as you can. Flex the ankle. Push the heel forward. Toes up, heel forward. Steady breaths. Toes up, heel forward, long, firm leg. Even if it's descending rapidly now, nearly there. Steady breaths. And then releasing all the way down to the mat. Let the right foot rest on the mat. Prepare the second side. Left hand, left leg. Option one, two, whatever works best to connect the hand in any way that suits you for your practice at this point. Standing as tall as you can. The leg doesn't, be, doesn't have to be straight. It, it might never go straight, right? Might never go straight. There's an equal amount of pull on the hand as there is pushing into the hand with the foot. Push pull between the two points, actually nothing moves, right? So we're creating this equilibrium of effort. And slowly opening to the left. So hand connected to the leg, foot to the left side. Again, do your best to stand tall. Notice any leaning. Slowly come back to center. Lift the left leg a little bit higher just to give you a bit more space. Inhale, exhale, kick the heel forward, lift the toes high. Kick the heel forward, lift the toes high. Firm left leg, standing tall, steady breaths. Slowly releasing down to the floor. All of a sudden, yoga got so serious, right? <laughs> Relax the legs. Okay. Second balance. We're going to stand again on the left foot. And for this variation, we're going to take a tree pose of your choice. So the right knee wide, the left, uh, the right foot to the inside of the left leg. You can go above the knee if your leg, your balance allows. So you can press into the thigh. You can press below or above the knee, but avoid the knee itself. Try to keep the right knee moving wide so it's opening across your pelvis and thighs. Hands perhaps together at the chest, or if your practice allows, you can reach up. You can have the hands wide, or you can have them together still above the head. Try to stand tall. Try not to arch the back, so pull the lower front ribs in, back of the pelvis down. To release the hands back down carefully, right foot to the floor, we'll switch over the legs, prepare the right foot to stand and balance, left knee wide. And again, keeping the foot lower if you're very, if you're very unstable today, keeping it lower just makes you feel a bit more comfortable. 
always bring the toes down if you need. And then you can bring the hands together, you can reach up or you can keep the hands lower, which makes it a little bit less um, effort as well. In one sense, your gra center of gravity is a little bit lower down. Otherwise, again, stand tall. Notice any arching of the back, pull the front ribs in, helps to engage the core. Back of the pelvis, down. Balance the head. Even gently pressing into your hands if your hands are at the chest. Balance out the two sides of the body. We release the hands and arms wherever they were down back to the hips and the left foot back down to the mat okay make sure you're now standing at the top of your mat we're going to move through a vinyasa or like a half sun salutation to get to the next posture feet hip width apart reach the fingertips down breathing in reach up overhead and breathing out as you fold reaching down to where you can Inhale, keep the hands down as you look forward, long spine. Exhale as you step back to plank or half plank. Remember, you can keep it a little bit lower if you're feeling quite tired and guide yourself gradually to the mat. Inhale, hop forward. Exhale, press back to downward dog. Let's take three breaths. Slowing the breath down. From here, we're going to step forward right and then left. And when you bring the feet to the top, this time bring the feet together. So squeeze the feet together, bend your knees. Maybe you can then squeeze your knees together. Don't worry if you can't, but do your best to keep pushing inwards. Hips low, reach up with the arms for five breaths in chair pose. So reaching the thumbs back over your shoulders, squeezing the legs firmly in. If you were to gaze, the gaze would actually be up to the space between the hands, if it works for your neck. Steady breaths. And then inhale, rising up, exhale and folding all the way back down. Halfway inhale, gaze forward, exhale as you travel back to plank position. Inhale at the top, exhale as you lower. Inhale on the way up, hop forward, exhale to downward dog. Okay, so we're going to string the warrior two, uh, warrior um, one, and then warrior two postures together. Inhale, right foot forward between the hands. Spin the back heel with your right knee bent. Rise up with the upper body, shoulders over your hips, hands, arms extending up. Do your best to keep facing forward with your pelvis and your chest. Steady breaths. From here, we're going to straighten out the right leg. Spin the right toes to the long edge of the mat. I've changed direction, by the way. And the left toes round to the back of your mat. Turn the right toes round slightly, face forward or to the back of your mat with your hips, bend into the left knee and worry you on, on the second side.
So without moving the feet too much, you're going to keep your left knee bent as well. Reach the right arm back behind. Turn the back toes slightly to the right so you're in a warrior two stance. You might find you can go a little bit lower into the left knee. The gaze over the left fingers, warrior two. On the left side, left knee bent, right leg straight, steady breath and balance. Straighten out the left leg as you rotate the left toes. Bend your right knee as you rotate your right toes to the front of your mat. Bend into your right knee, second side, warrior two. Gaze over your right fingers. So just to clarify, you're bending your right leg. I've changed direction. From here, we're going to spin the hands down to the floor, either side of that right foot. Press the hands flat to the floor, shoulder width apart, spread your fingers and drag your right foot back slightly. So the right foot's just slightly behind your hands. You want to be able to stand on your right foot here. So the foot is flat to the floor. And then as you stand on the right foot, press into the hands and lift the left leg as high as you can. If you're able to, your scope allows, you could potentially walk the hands back you could take one hand away and press onto the back of your right leg. You could potentially take both hands off the floor carefully, of course. Get that back heel as high as you can, the straight leg as straight as you can. And keep folding into the right leg, into the front leg. We're going to take the second side of this posture. Step the left foot out wide and behind, hands forward. You can step or whatever you work, or you could jump if you want to transition with a bit more energy. Depends how you feel now in your practice. Step in, standing on your left foot. And then when you're ready, begin to lift the right leg high. Again, you might want to take one hand away, walk the hands back. See how it feels to move your weight forward into one foot and the weight into the hands too if your hands are on the floor or your one hand is on the floor. Make the back leg as straight as you can. And then exhale as you step the right foot wide and back, hands flat to the floor. Bring the knees down, untuck the toes, send the hips to the heels. Let the head rest either floor or hands. You can stack the fists if the floor feels like it's a long way away. Allow the breath to slow down. See if you can make the breath long, but still full. Fullness to your breath as well as feeling it's long and slow. Especially that exhale, keep it long. Breathe out fully. And slowly releasing, come and have a seat on your mat. Hip roughly in the middle. Gently lay down on your back and draw the knees into your chest. Again, still slowing down the breath from the physical effort of the practice. 
Notice how you feel. Having completed all of the standing postures. Keep the left knee into your chest and extend your right leg forward. Right heel forward, left knee in. And then with your right hand on your left leg, the bent leg, begin to turn your left leg over to the right side. We're taking a twist. Once you get your twist with your left shoulder in the direction of the floor without necessarily forcing it down, once you get here, try and rest actually. Let's make this a little bit more restful, a restful twist as you're still guiding your breath to slow down. Yeah, I'm feeling the movement of the belly, the chest, the breath of the nose. And let's release this side. So taking your time to roll onto the back of the pelvis. Extend the left heel forward, right knee in, left hand holding the bent leg. And again, twisting to the opposite side. So left, uh, right leg is moving to the left side, your right arm. Reaching out wide. Once you get here, relax if you can. Relax into a twist. Slowly releasing back to center. Then bring both feet to the floor so the knees bent, the heels just in front of the pelvis. Let's bring the hands initially onto the belly, just around the level of the belly button, elbows wide, let the elbows rest on the floor. Be comfortable around the head and neck, shoulders, arms otherwise rested. And just feeling the breath and the movement of the breath in the abdomen. With the aim of moving your awareness there as you now begin to let the breath relax fully, so gradually allowing the breath to naturally slow down. Release any effort to breathe. In fact, let your nervous system take over again so that uh, your breath can become passive. Let the body breathe in its natural way. But, but noticing that, noticing the shift, the feeling of breathing without effort again in the body. Now releasing both the arms, hands out to the side. If you want to, the feet forward, legs extended, or you can keep the knees bent. Let the feet roll away naturally from each other. So rolling outwards from each other. Turn the palms to the sky. Let the shoulders settle. The neck release the head. Relax the face as you close the eyes. Feeling heavy and rested down through your limbs. A 
allowing gravity to aid a release of the joints, so your ankles, your hips, your shoulders, releasing the joints. Allowing yourself to grow heavier on the mat. With each passing out breath, feel the weight of the body gently drop closer to the earth. Breathing out, release closer to the earth. Breathing out, release closer, heavier. Breathing out, becoming a heavier. Breathing out, become heavier. Becoming heavier. Feeling rested. Feeling rested. Taking some much needed rest. Then gently beginning to wake. As you move your attention back, begin to notice the feet and the toes, and the fingers, hands, wrists. Trace up the legs, trace up the arms. Notice the hips and the shoulders or the back of the chest. As you begin to move your arms and begin to bend your knees, once more, begin to pull the knees into your chest. Hook the knees in. Let's pull the legs together as close as you can and now gently lift the head so that you're lifting head and shoulders, in fact, nose to knees, knees to nose. Hold the posture, but still breathe. Nice and steady, gentle breaths. The shoulders drop from the ears as you lift the head up here. Release the head and shoulders. Roll over to any side that works for your space and rest the head on that bottom forearm or even the bicep, actually, you can rest the head on one side. Press into that top hand, gently pull yourself all the way up, coming to a seated position. Maybe cross-legged, rest the hands, lift the chest, balance the head. Notice the space of the body, 
Notice your breath. Hopefully feeling a little bit more rested, a little bit more in control. And bring the palms together in front of the chest. Thank you for your practice. Namaste. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining in.